Okay, so uh, any select board reports, Trevor? Uh, so I'll just hit on something real quick. Uh, met with um, Darren from um, conservation, um, not our conservation, but the, I forget the acronym at the moment. EWP? For the EWP program from the, um, I think it's the um, regional or national conservation commission so they, they came to uh darren came to meet us and look at the plant in south deerfield by the river connecticut river um, to look at the pipe that has washed out from the last storms on the river with the river so high um he's going to just evaluate what programs might or might not be available or that he's not sure that that program can help us it is tricky because it's on the connecticut but we do um Obviously, we have, we have to get going. We we sent the camera through as far as we could to the pipe, and it looks pretty good to the manhole. So I think we are we are thinking the new manhole that we put in with a the drainage there uh, for the plant production. We maybe would tie into that and maybe either run a brand new pipe from there to the river with a new head wall in the river or um, rehabilitate the one we have. But that's all going to have to be looked at, um, and then possibly if we can tie in our stormwater drainage from the plant into that pipe too because if the river is ever really high we could if, if the drainage stormwater drainage is in the same pipe we can use we call it big bertha the pumps to force the water out of the plant instead of worry about water backing up in um so you know we're just in the midst of gathering the information what's going to be needed what the costs are going to be and any help we can get uh for that so um I think that's all I have at the moment. I think he mentioned that, I mean, we're looking at calling in April. What date was it? I want to say it was like the 16th or something like that. Right. I'm not so positive. we have a deadline of being able to de declare an emergency. So I don't know. Um, do Is it 30 days, did he say, or is it? I thought he said 30 days from that date, but. Uh, so we probably. Coming uh, up on it quick. I mean, might be advisable to declare an emergency mm -hmm. then we have 60 days to find out whether we can get any help from the state or federal government yeah um but what are your thoughts on that i'd love to just have some more info before we did but um i mean we we make an emergency declaration and then we don't do anything i don't know that there's any downside but is there, there, is is there specific agencies in mind that you'd be going after to be able to see if you can supplement it well, he, he's with uh, USDA, and this this department is part of that. Um, you know, we we can we can always borrow from the um, SRF loan, which is a state um, a state program, and it's a two percent loan. But you got to pay the whole thing back. Um, there is no grant money for that, but it is a twenty year note at two percent, so it's affordable, but it's still. The whole thing is on us uh so we really wanted to try and see if there was any help um so we've notified dep of the of the issues we reached out to the um to the uh to darren and his crew to just say what have you done have you done anything like they usually do bank re rehabilitation but it's usually like where a stream is um you know undercut a road right? undercutting a road you know that kind of thing it's not you know working on the kinetic it's a whole different animal so um not really sure where we're going to get the help if any so we're we're kind of reaching out everywhere to try and see what what can be done the other thing and i and because it's a big waterway like the connecticut um some of the advantages of having emergency declaration may not apply but i don't see a downside to it um because then you have a 60-day window in which you may or may not be able to avail yourself of um, emergency waterway um protection it's like I, I forget what the acronym for ewp is but it's so, something along that way um and uh also you know we can work in that area for with the conservation commission coming in and saying yes you can do this and you can do that on an emergency basis because what's happened is two different things are happening one is the pipe that broke that takes the effluent out into the river and the other is the drain um, is eroding. So there's two two areas that have got really bad erosion. And um, as Trevor mentioned, there's a new manhole 
And I suggest, yeah, let's, what about just going into those manholes and then building a whole new drain? Um, because trying to rebuild what's there would be so much more expensive than starting new and figuring it out. Uh, but, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and our CS. Not, the, not speaking close, closely. Oh, yeah. Uh, say no, yet. no, Blake. Well, uh, and NRCS with the USDA is, and, and it's Darren Davis is the guy that we've been looking at. Yes. Okay. To see if he could have any help. Is there anything that we could do with the Corps of Engineering? We, we, they would definitely have to do permitting through them if we do anything. And what, what's nice about NRCS is that they take over and do all the permitting. Um, so they would do the permitting with DEP, with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, all of that would get done through that entity, um, which would take a lot of load off of us. But again, I'm not sure if he's going to go back. He was going to go back and talk to the guy that kind of retired before him, who's had a lot more experience to see if his program, which is usually a little bit on the smaller side, or somebody else we could reach out to at the state to help. Okay, so my last question, because mm -hmm. I know that there's really nothing around that area, but I know up in the Northfield area that uh, Northeast Utilities or Eversource or whoever is, is responsible for the erosion up there. Correct. And I don't know First how light. far down they go, yeah. and if they would be a part of that, and that be mm -hmm. just looking at it maybe being another source. Is that right. loud it's enough first for you? It, First light, I think. Okay. Yeah. He almost got to eat it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a good, it's a good thought. Uh, so we should, you know, I know First Light is going through their, their permitting process again. Um, and so, you know, maybe somebody there could, we could talk to about, I, I don't think they control that erosion all the way down this far, but you never know. We could find out. Okay. It's a good, good thought. We'll find out. Well, um, for discussion, I'm going to make a motion that we declare an emergency from the April 16, four and a half inch rainfall. Um, so we can act or check the date on it, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say it was, bear with me one sec. Let me look at this email. Um, it was, I mean, well, we had a few things. So generally it was December 18th. We had a five and a quarter inch storm. And then we had another storm March 10th and then April 12th. Uh, was when we believe it let go. And that was another five inches on top of that because we found out just after April 12th um, when they were just before our, our last meeting at the plant, they heard waterfall and we shouldn't have, hear any waterfall over the edge. And they looked over and saw that the pipe was gone. So so I, I would have, say from April 12th. I have April 13th is when I took this picture of yep. my four and a half inches. Right. So... Yep. Sometime between April 12 and April 13, we had yep. four and a half inches. And so since it's the 13th, I'm going to say April 13. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> yep. So that's my motion. Is there a second? Hey, Kat. second. All right. For purposes of discussion, Casey, you had your hand up. So if the board were to approve this motion, um, do you want me to draft an emergency declaration for the chair to sign? Generally, the yes, chair please. signs an emergency declaration. Right. Yes, please. And then we would share it with the EMD. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So um, a second. Do yep. you want to discuss? Um, do you have any? I don't have any discussion. I think it's worth doing. And then we can, you know, that way it covers us if we can reach out for any help. Yeah. It may not help us in this situation, but. Uh, worth the try. Yeah. I agree that we try to go any avenue we possibly can to get this thing. Get help. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, Motion to be made and second to this. One other piece of discussion I'll say is, so we did the camera in the pipe. DEP um, is, uh, our DCP, our engineer, is starting um, the ball rolling for the survey of the area. So at least we know, you know, how much is, how many feet, how many far out the pipe goes, you know, how wide the bank is, you know, kind of what work we need to do. So he's going to survey the, the property already, but that's it. Oh. Okay, so if there's no other discussion, all in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Get a motion. Carries you. Three, three to zero. All right. Um, I, did you have anything, Blake? No. Okay. I'm still uh, in the office going through papers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, absorbing. I will just then quickly move on to the... <laughs> Select uh, Board of Health. Um, 
Blake and I attended the, our first uh, Valley Health Regional Cooperative uh, meeting on Monday, when was it, uh, the 9th of May. A um, couple of things came up. The MAPCO grant is being renewed for a five-year period. Um, this is a regional grant. I don't know how much of it's actually going to come to Green to Deerfield, but they were getting a higher price uh, or higher amounts uh, between 95 and 96,000 a year for five years. And the other things we found out was that they're working on a revision to emergency dispensing site uh, regulations, I guess. Um, okay. That may make it um, hopefully easier to do these things. Um, they are also alerted us that the state is requiring PFAS testing for all municipal wells. I think that uh, they're now talking about we don't have any regulations and we don't do anything on private wells. But, right. Um, we'll see what the state comes up with in regard to this. Um, and I think that was basically what they talked about. The only thing I was unclear about on the wells was the, the wells that we have for our water supplies, but that would fall under the water districts. Correct. Us. Right. Yep. And they are, I believe that, I know that the, uh, the old, old Deerfield is doing PFAS testing and I would assume the South Deerfield is as well. Um, but I think municipal waters means that even though they're in enterprises, they're going to have to follow what they yeah. too. So, but we should uh, definitely, I'll inquire at the next meeting with that, about that. <laughs> it would be good to have a joint meeting with them or, you know, stop in and, or a liaison to touch, touch base with the water department too on a couple of things coming up. It, with both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yep. Get them together. That would be very good if we did that. Mm-hmm. Um, right. our, our readings are really important to get done for this, you know, the, is it May? I think May is when they typically do that next reading. So I was hoping to stop in and talk to Heather about when that would be done. Have you heard if they certified free cash yet? Because they were going to hold that second meeting again, Blake, but I haven't heard about it. I haven't heard about it either yet. Okay. Just curious. Um, I, the one other thing maybe I would touch on for us to keep in mind is I know uh, Carolyn used to work on lining up uh flu clinics drive through flu clinics and stuff and i know that's out into the fall but i know i remember sometime in july she would start talking about getting on the list to get flu shots um and then try to line up volunteers or maybe talk with furcog and see if they're also doing one this year um should we group together or should we still plan on doing our original flu flu clinic right and i think this year she was thinking that with the shared shared nurses that yep. we would be able to get five nurses to Great. do the drive through clinic. So yeah, I will the, ask about that at the next meeting. Great. Um, um, okay. Yeah. And I, cause I think we put in an order for that stuff sometime in July for the flu, flu shots, mm -hmm. you know, so many adults, so, so many. many. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we'll get, we'll get to get, I'll stay on to, top of that. I'll have to do a download on, <laughs> you know, organizing food clinics yep. here soon. It's always something. Um, Great. Okay. All right. That's so now, um, did we have any, we don't have any minutes, right? No. Okay. No. So public works, uh, discussion of public works superintendent retirement and succession plan, job description and related items. Uh, so do we want to do, do we want to make it wait until we approve this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I would make the motion. Uh, we received a letter to the select board um, of Kevin Scarborough's official notification of, of his retirement as of July 5th, 2024. Um, he's expressed his gratitude to the select board and all the coworkers for various committees for the continued support over the last 10 years as superintendent. And we, Echo the same. We're very grateful for all that you've done for the town uh, in so many different ways. I can't thank you. I don't think I can count the ways you've you've helped me in my time on this board. Just learning what what your department needed. You always had your guys back. You were always looking to make sure you had the equipment needed, and um, seemed to be always shorthanded, <laughs> but always got everything done. So uh, really, just very grateful for your. Your leadership over that ten years, and you're 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 teaching me what what's needed and how to, how you need to run a department. So thank you, very grateful for that. 
So I'll make the motion to accept his letter of retirement. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank and, you very much. I also wanted to say thanks for, um, you know, when July came last year, we got to spend a lot more quality time together. <laughs> and uh, I really grew to appreciate uh, your sense of humor and and yeah, your uh, grace under fire. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, that was a rough few weeks. Yeah, but, but you really... You really stepped up. That, that Saturday, I kind of looked there and I felt sorry for about 30 seconds. I was like, all right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Fuck it up. Let's go. Let's go. Uh -huh. Let's but, go. Yeah, she was devastating. Yeah. So, Kevin, thank you. Yeah. I got this from you. <laughs> so, um, Pacey, why don't you just sort of frame what we're... Frame what the frame yeah. the conversation. So... Kevin and I had been talking about this. Brenda and I had been talking about this because we knew it was coming. Um, one of the things I've watched recently when we had a department head turnover was an evaluation of how operations were running in that department. And it became helpful when we not only picked up the pieces as we were planning for succession, in that department, but also understanding really what the operation was. So my thought for the board was, first of all, we have to reevaluate the job description. It's old. We did have it reevaluated when we did the class comp, um, but we do have to touch that job description for one thing. But the other thing was, is I, after thinking about it for a while and Kevin and I talked about it, uh, maybe it would be worthwhile to have the board consider some sort of short-term evaluation of the department, maybe on an interim basis or hiring a consultant to really get a bird's eye view with a different perspective yeah. on how the divisions work together and how they individually do that, provide that service to mm -hmm. the town. That's exactly right. Yeah. I have been thinking about this too and talking with Brenda and Kevin and others on just um it, it is a time um to reflect on where we want to go and in, in the future do we have the equipment do we have the manpower um now is the time to really take a just an unvarnished look at you know not uh picking apart how you led the department or what it is but just a we'll have a fresh look and we'll have your opinion on what you see, what you would, what you would change, and then um, maybe to bring in somebody completely outside of our family and say, you know, let's look at this, you know, from a totally different perspective. Somebody to come in and just evaluate it with some experience, either running a department or not, and uh, just to evaluate where we're at and where we want to go in the future. What kind of job we yeah. want the position to be? You were very hands-on. Get in the ditch right i mean when there was a problem you grab the truck or you grab the plow or you grab the backhoe or the shovel and you jumped in and got the work done and that was um excellent you know because with a department with very few men you know it's you have to all jump in to do it but um is this the time where we look at is that the is that the kind of leader we want going forward doing are we are we at a time where we're going to need somebody that maybe runs the list in the clipboard more and direct somebody else to get in the ditch and looking at other things as well or maybe not maybe they evaluate and they say you know what you really need a working superintendent and um but i think it's worth having that discussion and figuring out where we want to go in the future and see what your guys thoughts are too well you know it's obvious that anytime you've had a supervisor in a position for a decade it's an opera. It's, you know, it's sad to see them go, but it's also almost a requirement that you, you take the opportunity to look at the whole operation and find out what's changed. What are the needs have, have the needs of the community changed? Um, and we learned a valuable lesson when, um, Zoe Smith left us and her state job mm -hmm. and we had an interim, um, person come in who, wasn't from outside, but, you know, we, we learned from that experience that a lot of things that were standard operating procedure should have been looked at. And, uh, you know, so I agree that having 
um, an outside pair of eyes uh, in some capacity as we develop the the you know as we develop the uh, personnel department uh, job description um you know we take that time to uh not rush into anything right we want to make sure that uh, you know the next person who comes along is going to be you know as caring about the town as kevin has been so mm -hmm. um you know i i think that would be a valuable thing for us to do so what's your thoughts are blake I agree with w what you're saying there. I think the other part of it is, is that having Kevin still on board and having another person come in, you can Kevin can reflect on what's been going on. The other person can add to it, and maybe they can make uh, add some discussion as to how to do certain things moving forward. Because there are a lot of new things that Kevin's had to deal with as he's been in his time here. Mm -hmm. And again, somebody coming in may have been de dealing with different issues. And then having Kevin come in and explain the way that the town runs mm -hmm. is, I think, is a good idea. And also to have new and fresh perspective of yeah. where the town is going and uh, as it's moving forward. And I know your your retirement's coming up pretty quick. I've only got a month and a few weeks, so uh, smile just goes like. <laughs> uh, but but I think. Um, Maybe uh, hiring somebody on in an interim position. I think we you mentioned this a little bit too, Casey, because um, you know that that time goes by pretty quick, and then and then we could view this position not as like they're going to be here for twenty years, ten years, or whatever. It'll be a short term position to start to just kind of say we really want you to have a you know um, like with Tim, he wasn't you know for the. Skims, he was not looking to step into that position. It was just right. a hold position, right. and it gave that time to for everybody to evaluate, but still have a, another man there ready or or woman there ready to to take over um, and and to give some support to the numbers that you have in that department. So I think that makes sense. There are um, there are certain things that are in my mind. I'm a little nervous about. Um, I know you're not going very far, and I'm, I, I assume you'd still answer the phone, but there are. Um, there are concerns I have, like, um, you know, cemetery plots. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to look at, and I'd really love to have, and maybe this comes out in the discussion either tonight or, or when we have a consultant here or, or an interim uh, person to, to kind of get a little bit back to core stuff. I'm, I'm always really, and I try to do this in our office, just to look at the core business of the town like what are the things that happen each june you know may june july there are there are certain things that have to come up and have to happen the appointments the um cleaning the culverts the i just wanted to maybe get a if we round table the list picking your brain that said like okay well every year we gotta you know carolyn was on me to put dunks in so we had to order those at a certain time or you know we we just really had a core business and we we understand like that that's always going to come every year but and then and then as soon as you plan on starting on something like that a tree falls on a roof on north main or you know we get eight inches of water in an hour or whatever might happen you know it happens every day so i just really i didn't want to get lost in this those things that are in your back of the mind that you picked up from hap eaton that you carried through and that just you knew and you just did but really no one really knows right. all the stuff that you do every day. So I didn't want to miss any of that. So that's one of the reasons I asked Kevin to come. Yeah. Because I know we need to create some success right. for the next person that comes in. Yep. We need, it, in some ways, it might be useful to have an overlap. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. what's in his head and mm -hmm. not on paper right. can be difficult to pick back up. Yep. When half left, because I was here when half left. Yep. It was a challenge. You needed somebody that had sort of the institutional knowledge. Right. And so the good news is, is Hap answers the phone when Kevin calls. I'm pretty nice. sure Kevin will answer yeah. occasionally, but there's going to be a point where we yeah. can't get that information. So right. if there's an overlap, that might be something to consider as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, the, you know, if we need to, if we need to find some way to get the interim person and Kevin and someone who could create the beginning of an operational manual right. that says x y and z happens in january or february uh you know because it's it's definitely hard to do if you don't 
if you come into a job and you don't realize that, hey, I'm responsible for selling uh, variable plots, mm -hmm. right? You know, I mean, who would think that the DPW would be the place to go? But maybe right. that's a common practice. Um, and so I think that would be a valuable, a valuable thing. So um, that is something that that is something that seriously needs help within is our documentation i know of such and the maps the maps i've gone over that with you yeah it's absolutely insane. and also the prices etc i mean you, you go in you go in and you, and you pull out this big folder and then you kind of open it up and lay on one of the tables and you pick a cemetery and then you kind of peel the paper apart there's a little blue one don't, don't touch that blue one because you blow yeah. on it it's going to disappear right um yeah this okay. is it's it's it needs help. It does. It definitely needs help. You know, yeah. there's programs that are out there, but unfortunately, the programs are expensive. I know. You know, um, but, but it, you could do it, but it, it's it's time consuming. It is. So. It's It may need, you know, again, an outside consultant yeah. because you're so busy or the so department head so busy with that. Um, just to try and focus this, mm -hmm. what do we think we're going to do? Do we have interim candidates that we might consider? Uh, and without naming names, yes. I mean, you know, how do we go about this process, Casey? We could reach out and see. Um, there was somebody that Carolyn had mentioned a couple weeks ago, but we could reach out and see if there's anybody that any of us knows mm -hmm. that might be interested in helping. Um, that would be my first thought, mm -hmm. but you never want to, you know, jeopardize somebody's employment or sort of put them in the hot seat. Correct. So I would like to do that on the backside yeah. and report back if there was an interested person. Yeah. If you guys had any individual thoughts about that, you could certainly email them to me individually. That'd and be good. I could I could follow up. Yeah. Um, if that that's sense. something you would like me to do. Yes. A couple of days isn't gonna isn't gonna give me enough time, but maybe I could report back. Yeah. Okay. You it, know, I certainly can send an, be... an email to right. everybody via blind carbon copy so you can't talk to each other, but yeah. you could send it back to me. We'll do that. If I have updates, I could do it that way to start and then mm -hmm. maybe we have a uh, another conversation at the next meeting That's not fine. this yeah. wednesday but two wednesdays and um i have been in contact with the Sunder sunderland and waitley select board members about how their dpws or highway departments however they call them operate and um they might be a resource for finding a name as well mm -hmm. you know not necessarily someone that's on their staff but just they might have heard something so yeah i think yep. that's a good plan casey why don't uh if i can get a little bit of his time that might help too yeah just to sort of the two of us we do talk about these things but yeah you know it's one of those things where we actually have to narrow our focus on a couple of things yeah mm -hmm. so if that would be helpful what do you it think would. about that Kevin? Yeah, no problem. I think that one of the, you know, I know that Tim was talking about Wheatley and Sunil, and I'm thinking that maybe we ought to be looking at some of the other towns that surround us and some yeah, of the oh, bigger yeah, towns yeah. because they could have foremans that are underneath superintendents that could could uh, fit mm -hmm. in. I I right. don't know anybody. I'm just right. I'm just bringing this up as yeah, a exactly. I, so. I think that um, you're right, and that the bigger towns have more resources, and so there might be opportunities there. We we couldn't entice the superintendents to come here because we wouldn't be paying what they're getting from their towns but right maybe a foreman or somebody that's a mm. that's underneath them an assistant or that sort of thing is what i was thinking yep so the other thing i could do is that i gave you a packet um you've got some job descriptions to look at yeah i just kevin and i had talked this morning and he grabbed another one for you guys this you could here. just yeah you could take a look at them yep um I would like you to know that personnel is meeting on the 23rd. I have this on their agenda, not to make a final thing, but right. just to put it on their radar screen uh, because personnel does approve job descriptions as yep. part of what they their charge in the bylaws. Um, but for purposes of what the three of you just told me, if we could maybe get some idea of whether somebody would be interested in helping us evaluate the department, mm -hmm. um, maybe we could, maybe Kevin and I could bring some information back to the board. That's great. I think that makes sense. Is two weeks enough time or yeah. less if I can get more information? <laughs> I don't know about special meetings. I don't know where the, with a new board makeup, I'm not sure exactly how to navigate that. So I think you guys need to give us input well we have a we have a meeting on wednesday and obviously we're not expecting anything there yeah but um a single topic meeting a truly single topic meeting is sometimes a good 
thing yeah. to, to take on. And when I say single topic, I mean, don't add anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, because it's tempting. Oh, we're meeting. I we know. might as well it's deal so, with these other three issues now. And sometimes you have with, to. With Kevin, if I was thinking about these things that you, the extra things that you do, if you could set them maybe up in, in a bullet form. So in other words, that you do sell graves. And yeah. the other thing is that you put them down there, the things that are in your head, that right. not necessarily part of the job description. Right. When you come back with it, it'll be something that, you know, as you're doing them, I think that if you would well, jot them down, it might almost be... like a daily log. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, something I get up, I go up. there, I go do this, I do that. Every Monday, I go to the transfer station. I make sure these right. guys have done this. I pick up the checks from Saturday, go back, make sure everything's ready for and the bring the, turnovers. And, and, and the contacts, you know, we have Janet Means, but if there's yeah. other people, you know, oh, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, you know, waste hauling yeah. guys, that kind of stuff. That, and part of the next job description should be uh, managing um, an operational manual that is a living document so as things change it gets added in mm -hmm. um you know, and i know that's oh, in all your spare time you'd love to do that <laughs> but um in order for this to to be easier the next time mm -hmm. um, that's sort of what we need and thankfully you'll do a little bit now but the next person is going to have to do the whole thing <laughs> so you would want me to add an element of developing and administrating an operational management or operations Man manager yeah. manual. Sorry, I will get Makes to that sense. word. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. As Just part of capture in, in some ways it's captured in in various different right. items, but, but if you want all. to see it succinctly in that term, we could yeah. look at that in the yeah. job description. Yeah. And it, you know, we, it's really part of being a manager, right? Is yeah. to define how your operation works. So and, um, and it has to be part of a, a succession plan. You never know what's going to happen, in particularly in a construction environment. Uh, you know, yeah. Somebody could be out for months and months and months, and somebody has to step in and try to keep the ball rolling. So, And I'm thrilled, you know, the wastewater treatment plant all has new ones now, mm -hmm. obviously with the plants that we've done, but all the other work we've done too, that um, we've got good operation manuals there now for, for, for all we and do it's there. And it's not just... We're experiencing this now, right, on the select board, because um, somebody who's had 20 years of operational knowledge mm -hmm. um, is not here. So, yeah, you know, now I'm, you know, going to the Valley Health Regional, you know, cooperative, <laughs> and Blake's, you know, trying to figure out what he's going to do. So, it's, yeah, it's a lot it's, of us trying to figure you know, that out. We need to do the same thing. Yes, exactly. we do. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, but that is important for new people. We're going to get our administrative staff with all their spare time to help us do that. Yeah, tons of spare time. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just had a, yeah, and a I, little joke. I, it, no, it's okay. I do, it's I do okay. apologize up front for taking all their time in the last week no, because I've been important. injured quite a bit. It's good. Like, it's Tim important. said. Tim asked if I was going to put a cot in the conference room. So. <laughs> Yeah. There are days people ask me that question too. Yep. Um, so if we were going to get back to you and we had a firm timeline, that's probably going to help Kevin and I. Okay. Um, is it possible for the board to consider meeting in two weeks? That's uh, would be the twenty seventh. You mean like a Monday? That's meeting? Memorial Day, but that's we could oh, never mind. We that's could do fine. Tuesday or something if you want. If you want to have a single, I'm just thinking if we don't, if we give it a couple weeks, then. The 29th, we have a meeting. We right? have a meeting on the 29th. The only other thing I could think of is maybe if we did a specific topic at like five o'clock. Yeah. And started the regular meeting at six. Would right. that work? That's fine. That's fine. You want to do it that way? Yeah, I think that'll work. Fine with me. Yeah, I'll just change my start time. Yeah. Um, and because it... then we have a deadline, which will help Kevin and I sort of get a better framework of what we'll bring back for information. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Yep. Everyone in consensus on that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so over the next, I guess over the next little bit, if you think about stuff like yeah. that, that are oddball things, you're like, oh, yeah. And I so want to know that. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> he needs to write notes. I need to write notes. And if yep. you guys have a chance to take a look at some of these job descriptions, things might pop out at you. Yeah. Right? In the job description that's, that's, our draft format. Yeah. I've pulled things that I saw in other job descriptions 
but okay. like for instance this operational manual thing i just wrote myself a note to put that into whatever we use for a draft so this one here on top is the one that is you that's the a draft. little bit so yes. for draft. Mm -hmm. okay and then all the others are here and then right. there's another right. one here okay right. good so, and he has to fill in the license information like yeah. what licenses are necessary yeah. i hadn't asked him yet but right. he's got to do that but then also that'll depend on what a lot of that has to depend on what you're looking at for the person. I mean, right. if you're looking for strictly administrative, then they're not going to need a class B CDO. They're not going to need any of the hydraulic licenses, yeah, you know, for any of the equipment, for but the cargo, specialties. Yeah. Um, somebody is going to have to step up and, and get a um the hoister's license for our bridge crane. Because like right now I cover the crane, mm -hmm. you know, and then normally Chuck covers the crane with his license, but obviously Chuck's still out. Yeah. No idea when he's coming back. Right. So we can need somebody to step up so we continue to use that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I would suggest, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of personnel. There's, there's a lot there, there. There's a lot there. So yeah. that's. So I would suggest you hand this off if you haven't already to the personnel department and see what they like in them and what they don't like in them, because all of them are going to have different language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that will help us because there's three of them and one of them's a lawyer, I believe. <laughs> and uh, so that could be beneficial in evaluating these documents okay. that, that we don't have, you know, Chinese menu of, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so I think that would be useful. Okay. I was trying to get one other one, um, but what I can do is I can send the packet off with the additional job description I got yep. this evening. Okay. And if I can get the other one I was looking for, um, I was looking for one from Hadley. So I sent their uh, human resources director an email today. Mm -hmm. If I can do that, then I could send it off in preparation for a short conversation with them at their next meeting. Okay. So that way, by the time we get back to the table on the 29th, maybe I have some information from personnel board as well. Yep. And I um, think I know the public works department head over in Greenfield and that would um, be good. I can give him a it's Marlo, right? Marlo. Yeah. yeah. Warner. Um, he's done work for me in past life. And yeah. uh, so I can reach out to him too. So just a question for you. Um, Knowing what you do, what's not in your job description that should be there? <laughs> wow. There you go. Did you really want to say that? I was fishing for a buck Friday. You can answer <laughs> more of what do I do that's not in it that I shouldn't be doing. Right. Well, that's that, that's, that's also it. more of, you know, like prime example this morning, you know, um, you know, my position, quote unquote, should I be up running the loader at the transfer station? pushing back this or crushing a, you know, a container down or picking up right. uh, recycling and getting it taken care of with the guy that's there. No, but you got to do what you got to do. I mean, you're not going right. to have this one first. You don't have anybody up there that's licensed next. I mean, you're not going to have this, this one person work by themselves because dangerous. You know, they're going to get hurt. Yeah. So, right. you know. so what's the chances of getting these people licensed to actually do the jobs that you're doing? And that, that would be your personnel that you have right now. And the other thing is, I think that a director, even though you, the director, you should be have the knowledge to run that equipment. Right. So your next, your successor should be, should have the should uh, have. credentials as well. Exactly. But not to be doing it at the way you're doing right. it, right. basically. Uh, and, you know, and the same thing, like, like, like with the mechanic shop, mm -hmm. you know, I, I turned wrenches all my life, you know, so anytime that, you know, Chuck was working on something, Went in there and, you know, I picked up on something that he didn't see and he picks up on stuff that I didn't see and, you know, it worked really well together. Um, but, you know, once again, you know, the next person, are they going to be able to go ahead and say, okay, well, that sound right there, that's that, that rattle, that's yeah. because that, that valve right there is going bad and it's because it's electronic. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's. Right. I'm a tough person to replace. Yes, we we know that, Kevin. We're already in sleepless nights. I mean, you know, between uh, just you know, just in the building stuff. You know? I know. Um, and once again, you know, Chuck was the one that was that was dealing with the buildings before. Chuck's out. Um, I know the buildings pretty much inside now. You know, and and obviously, you know, my day comes and goes. It doesn't mean my phone shuts off. You know? Right. I, I'm a town resident. I you text know, you I'm, at I'm still eight or nine at night. <laughs> so you know, yeah. all the time. You know, it is what it is. You're not the only one. I know. I know. Yeah, and um, just to, just so that the finance committee doesn't think I've forgotten them, um, we have collective bargaining agreement 
mm -hmm. with the DPW? Yes, we do. And when you get more licenses, does that affect your pay rate? No. Nope. Uh, um, nope. No, nope. you're just stay on that. Correct. Okay, good. Their pay That's... rate is their pay rate. This is what you're supposed to have for a license period. Right. right. Okay. It's in their job description. Yes. Right. I just wanted to. Yeah. Say that, you know... And and this position, my position as superintendent and the assistant yeah. superintendent, neither one of us are union. Right. Yeah, you're we're, we're both um, exempt. Um, salary. Yep. yep. Right. So. Um, okay. Well. Do we need any... Do you have any other suggestions that you think we need to think about? I'm writing some notes, so just so I don't forget. I, if you I, think I of something, you can send me an individual email. I think we've covered, our, you know, what what the uh, what the current the the, right. the immediate effort is to try and see if there is an interim person that we want to consider. And we can I, group together. Yeah. I really like the idea of having a fresh shot eyes come in. You know, yeah, because they'll just see stuff. Yeah, I mean, different different people look at different things, right? You know, um, they may, they won't have all the answers, but yeah. they might have something we didn't think of. Exactly, you know. Right. And by no means am I perfect by any means. So yep. I'm we all can learn there's stuff that I've missed down the road. So mm -hmm. we can all learn. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll think of stuff too that I think right. you know, told me things over go those along. Years. Obviously, you guys got my number. Text me, even email yeah, me, whatever. I appreciate that. So very much. It you is know what it is. Well, I mean, obviously now anyway, but and then all of our build, you know, you oversee all of our buildings too. you know, right. every different building we take on. It's like another another part of the family we have to kind of handle and figure out what, what their keys. ailments are. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That long set of keys. Well, there is one element that could be an issue later on, and that's OSHA. Mm -hmm. We are required to be OSHA compliant, even though we're not subject to the federal law per se. Right. Um Ours is slight, slightly modified for the Commonwealth, but we will need to maintain that compliance. And that is one thing that Kevin does. Right. So from a long-term perspective, we may want to think about what that looks like because we can take advantage of his knowledge, but we really need to think about the value of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if we do have to have a compliance officer, even on a very temporary or not temporary but on a very limited basis it may be something that he and i should talk about and bring back to you guys for yeah. consideration and yeah. the osha compliance officer i mean are there other departments that are subject to the same compliance requirements well or everybody is everybody's right. subject so, to osha yeah no matter maybe we you know maybe we need to think about what does the town need for osha compliance you know needs um, you know, is it somebody in the police department? Is it somebody in other another department? Uh, you know, is it? It's just uh... to be honest with you, for the most part, it's really it's not that much at this point in time right now. Um, you know, like like she said, technically we're not an OSHA state, but we are underneath the Department of of Labor, labor standards, right? Labor standards, and they're the ones that actually come in and do audits and stuff like that now, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is which is I think is great. I mean, yeah, they've got a great system. Yeah. Um, all that means is basically that the state of Massachusetts has made the law ever so slightly more stringent than the federal law. And that's yeah. why we don't have to follow federal laws, because yeah. technically we already do. We already do. Yeah. You know, and it all depends on where you are and what you're doing. You know, when the yeah. guys are at the shop, they're working in the 1910 general industry. Yeah. You know, as soon as you go out and you start doing some work on a building or something like that. Now you're 1926. Now you're working on underneath construction. Yeah. You know, for the most part, the rules and regulations are the same for the most part until you get into all, the action and all the other specialties and, right. and it's a different world. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they pretty much got everything together down at the wastewater treatment plant. I mean, Eric yeah. does a great job down he there. Does. I'm stackly happy with, with yeah. that pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a huge positive for the town, no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the schools and stuff like that. It's the schools is is more of the slips, trips, and falls and cutting their fingers in the right. uh cafeteria. Yeah, you know, um, and it's all about making sure you know kids are safe, yeah, people are safe, exactly. employees are safe, yeah. and then uh, around here, keeps our insurance down. Small stuff, you know, yeah. nothing. It's it's nothing that's really huge, major. You know, like eventually, like the, the rampway down there, we gotta we gotta replace exactly. that with a better slip um slip grip. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, we got something on there for the time being, but they got us out of trouble for that day. But you know, realistically, the whole thing should be replaced. Right. Um. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's stuff, but there's not stuff. You yeah. Know, it's I just want to make sure people understand some of what we have to pay attention to mm -hmm. that we have an in-house person for. We may not 
we won't have that yeah. same advantage later on. Right. So that's sort of why I mentioned that it may not be vested in Kevin's uh, successor, but um, it needs to be vested somewhere. Right. Yeah. And um, so, all right, since I said we'd get out of here by six o'clock. Um, I'm, I'm going to add one thing since we're talking DPW. I know everyone's going to be excited for this, but it's the first annual asphalt day on Wednesday. There is a celebration of asphalt at uh, yeah, round of applause, everybody. Yes. At yes. Asphalt. Uh, asphalt. No, um, all kidding aside, um, asphalt plays a huge role in our in our town because of all states asphalt. They are a huge employer and do a lot for the community. And they are um, they've invited people to uh, their plant up um, on 901 River Road, East Deerfield, Mass. at 10 a.m. on Wednesday the 15th. Celebration recognition of Asphalt Day, including optional tour of the facility, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. I I can't wait to see that. And um and so you're gonna, you're gonna represent the select board. Now. I will, and anybody else that wants to yeah. go. Um, so that that's gonna be. I've already fun. been up there and you know saw them blasting and went in and did the tour. It's yep, interesting and educational. Yeah. Um, so good. What about you, Blake? You're gonna go I might go up because last time I was up there, I got kicked out of there. So I figured that maybe I'm invited this time and, you know, maybe it'd be all right for me to go in there. I have yeah. one question for you. Yeah. Are you still current with uh, OSHA? And... Yeah, I still, I still am a current instructor for both general industry and construction. Mm -hmm. So and I, I renew every four years. That's our advantage. When you be, uh, when you become a consultant, will you give us a good Deerfield area? <laughs> We'll see. It depends. depends. He's thinking Maybe. better than that. <laughs> um, one other topic I saw in my email I just wanted to bring up, and I, I don't know if you're putting in for Wednesday's mail, is there was a discussion about the lighting at the new plant. Um, so we received a complaint from a neighbor. Yeah. Um, Kevin and I talked about it briefly. Yeah. Um, it will be in your mail for Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. And he's aware that it will be in your mail for Wednesday. So we can just look at the lights, but I think they're all designed to go down. I mean, they're all down. Like they're, they're, yeah, they're we can take planned. a quick peek and just see if maybe we can put a shade on one side of it. Yeah. It's a possibility. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I read the letter. There's, I know who it is. Yeah. There's more uh, lights yeah. on that plant once for safety. Plus we have twice the plant that was there before. Exactly. So you can't just not and light it. Correct. Are they are there requirements for the height of them? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in other words, are were they put at a specific height because they're required to be at a specific height, or because they were put at that height? Basically, it was a requirement because they have when they actually do it, they look at how many looms are are yeah. being put out and right. what what the the spread right. is, mm -hmm. and that's why the higher it spreads further, spreads further, less poles, right. So but they are shaded. shaded. They're not like, a, oh, it's a light out to right. everywhere. I mean, you're going to see it from across the field, but right. it's not like um, these are spotlights that just shine out. They all direct down Correct. to illuminate for safety to make sure no one's climbing around that plant, for one, because that's a really mm -hmm. safety for, for, you know, for that. And then plus just safety for, you know, anybody that's on there at night, any employees that have to go there after hours, whatever it might be, but... Um, but let's just check and make sure. I don't want to say that we're all compliant. I think we are, but because mm -hmm. I, I know this. So that'll be a topic for, for Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, okay. it'll be Thank in your you. mail. Yep. And hopefully I'll have an answer for you before you even ask. That'd be great. And then you put a, um, oh, you put your town administrator's report in here, yep. which I will you read as well. Yep. Thank you. It's really, it's like a whole book. It is a book. <laughs> it's two books. Yep. It's two weeks of books. Okay, great. All right. So, I'm hoping this will facilitate reporting at the select board meetings on Wednesday nights. Are you looking yep. for a motion to adjourn? Uh, or I'm looking for, any... is there any? Chris Nolan, do you have anything else? Any comments? I don't. Thank you. Thank you. I would entertain a motion unless there's anything else. Any other topics? No? no other... Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, I. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks you for, for coming, coming out. Coming.